In this episode, we create a full sized cube that will house all equipment. You'll see how it all fits together and how you can make it yourself. This is when we really start moving from cardboard cockpit to a working spaceship simulator room. Welcome to The Creative Geek, where we help makers of games, toy and playful technology to develop their craft by understanding play. For example, through two-way interactive simpid builds, like this one. I'm designing something that's in essence a giant button box. And in this episode we will focus on the actual box. I decided to make this at least semi-transportable, so I need to make it in a way where parts can be pulled apart. And for this I decided on a skeleton with attachable plates on top. The skeleton will be built out of pipes, with pipe connectors attaching the pipes. And I'm using 25mm or 1 inch pipes. And once this all is done, the walls can be attached with the kind of clamps that are meant to connect pipes to the wall. And I'm basically using them backwards. I was looking for quite some time to find the right rods to use. And I started looking at PVC pipes. And there are PVC pipes with a diameter of 25mm. So that would have worked. But then I realized the cheapest solution and strongest solution was actually to use curtain rods. So I used the IKEA curtain rods. So this is IKEA Hugard and it's about 2 meters. And in these 2 meters there's 2 rods that can extend up to about 4 meters. As the plastic fittings have an inner diameter of 25, only one of the pipes can be used. It's still one of the cheapest ones, even if I just used half of them, but, but that would be a lot of material that goes to waste. So instead, what I decided to do was to use the ends and turn them into small pipes that I can put into the larger one. And then just fasten this in place. And that way I can use the thicker pipe as well, even though it doesn't fit perfectly onto the connections. Once this is in place, I can put a little bit of tape onto it so that it fits more tight into the other pipe. As you might understand, this takes time. Here you can see me assemble a small cube that will become the bottom back corner of the larger cube. To this smaller cube I will later attach the player chair. I decided to go for two chairs as I want to be able to play this together with someone. As this button box will be so large that I can fit inside it, I can also build it for fitting two people inside, so that we can play the game together, letting one player be the pilot and the other take on the role of the co-pilot. Here's a lesson in getting the right tool for the job. It might feel like maybe it's easy to just go with what you got, and in the beginning I used a hacksaw to get through these pipes, mainly because I wanted to get started. But since then, and since I'm going to do a lot of pipe cutting, I got myself a pipe cutter. And now I just place it in the right place. I screw this one until it kind of grabs onto the pipe. And then I turn the pipe around. And when I turn it around once, I do it one more time. And then I do this as much as needed. And of course you can do this with a hacksaw. But this takes so much less energy. This work then continues with the rest of the immersion cube. You can see the small cube down in the left corner uh, with some changes to it. There was a lot of testing and remaking involved. To the right I'm building a mirrored version of the small cube for the other side of the larger cube. And on the wall behind me you can see the pipes that make up the first wall where the TV is mounted. These were discussed in a previous video and I'm linking it here. If you're thinking of doing something similar, I think you should, but be aware there's a lot of work. In total I've used up something like 40 meters of pipe and I don't know how many fittings. It's time to start mounting the chairs and I'm using these. So this one has an inner diameter of 25 millimeters which is the same as the pipes. And then I screw this one into the chair. And now this part goes into the chair. And that way I can snap them onto the pipes and move them around a bit and find the perfect place for the chairs. Yeah. 
I'm trying to use this as is and avoiding special solutions, but here at the bottom of the chair I need to make something. This pipe needs to be a couple of centimeters higher than this pipe. And that means this one needs to connect about here. And of course if I put them next to each other it's going to get too high. So I need to cut off half of this part and half of this part and mount them on top of each other. Even if it's a bit tight in this situation, the pipe cutter works really well also on plastic. So if you decide to go for PVC pipes, this should work also for you. I'll link one in the description below the video. From here, there's basically just a continuation of adding pipes. I was going to give you a long time lapse, but sadly my overview camera stopped working and you just have to settle for the mixed images. I began by adding the floor that connects the back part with the chairs to the front part with the TV. And at this point I could also try out the size to make sure that I actually fit inside and that it became comfortable. This was mostly accomplished by tweaking the angle of the footrest and the height angle of the chair. A lot of this I already tested on simpler prototypes and now it was more of a double check in this more permanent solution. After this I continued up the walls and I tested out the height of the control panel. And after this I continued upwards to the roof of the cube. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the desktop for buttons and flight sticks. And you can see part of it in this episode, but if you subscribe and click the bell, then you get notified when the next episode shows up. And then I will tell you more about them. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button if this gave you anything. And check this playlist if you want to see more about this project.